first we're going to create a nice little circle. We're going to set it to a diameter of four or five millimeters. We're going to create another circle, set it to about 40 millimeters. We're going to drag the dimensions so we can see them. We're going to create another circle at 35 millimeters. Our mechanical movement is 27.35 millimeters. So we're going to create a circle of that diameter. Then we're going to create a line, just a vertical line. We're going to select that line. We're going to set it to construction line. We're going to create another line, this one a horizontal line. We're also going to set it to construction line. We're going to be using these two lines as mirror lines for when we create the little arms that hold the wrist strap. We're going to hit L, we're going to create another line. We're going to go to the edge of the circle here. We're going to go up 10 millimeters. We're going to go over 22 divided by 2, so 11 millimeters. We're going to set both of these lines to construction. Then we're going to create another line, come straight down. Then we're going to create another line, come straight over 4 millimeters. Then we're going to create a fit point spline and click this point here. We're going to drag it down all the way to the edge here. Now we're going to grab these little things, set about so, and then grab this one and do about, about like so. You want them both roughly vertical. Now we're going to double click this line and that'll select all three lines. You come up to create mirror. Now we're going to select our mirror line. We're going to select the vertical line first. We're going to click OK. We're going to double click here, double click here, click mirror, and then select the horizontal line here as our other mirror line. And there we go. We have the sketch basically done for our watch. We're going to finish sketch. Now we're going to click this, 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 and this. And we're going to go E, and our movement is 6.6 .6 millimeters tall, so we're going to come up 7.65 millimeters because our crystal that goes on top of the movement is going to be one millimeter. We're just going to go ahead and come into bodies, rename this case, we're going to right click, appearance, we're going to go down to paint, glossy, and enamel glossy black. If you do not have this, there will be a little download button to the left of it. Simply click the download button and it'll download it into your library and then you can just drag and drop. We're going to name our sketch main. We're going to click our 27.35 millimeter circle. We're going to even, we're going to extrude it 4.34 millimeters, which is the actual thickness of our movement. We're going to name this the CH2189G movement. We're going to right click it. We're going to go to appearance Then we're going to hide paint. We're going to go down into metal, gold gold polish. Now we're going to right click, duplicate. We're going to right click, then click edit. We're going to go to advanced, drag this out a little. We're going to set color to image. We're going to navigate into our folder that has an image. We're going to just, just Google CH2189G for an image of the movement downloaded from Google. This image right here is the one we're going to use. Click open. We're going to drag this back to the side so we can see. We're going to click apply. That'll apply the texture. We're going to drag and drop onto our movement. Right click here, edit image. Drag this up so we can see. Scale. We're going to set to about 31 millimeters because it wasn't a perfect image. Now we're going to set our offset. You just have to kind of play with this until it looks right. It should be about a 15.45, but I think it was 16. And it's still a little off, so we're going to try 15.5. That looks okay. We're going to click done. If you want, you can go to re check relief pattern, select our movement image and then select edit image, apply the same scale, 31 millimeters, set the height of everything to about 0.5 millimeters. Then our offset will set to 15.45, just like the other image, 15.45. And then this one was 15.5, click done, click apply, then close, close, in some cases, the relief pattern will make it look better. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the relief pattern on there just because in the render, it'll look pretty good. If we go into render, we can see how it looks. Now, this does look weird on the edges and all that doesn't isn't accurate on the bottom, but we're only really gonna see the top. If we really wanted to get into it, we can create another movement object of half the size and get the picture of the bottom of the movement and apply it and really make it detailed, but that's a lot of work for no reason. So this is what we have for our watch so far. We're gonna hide the case. We're gonna come here. We're gonna come up 4.34 millimeters. We're gonna unhide the case. We're gonna hide the movement. 
and that will join these two together. We had sketch, we can see the lines better. Now we can see how our movement fits into our case. We're gonna go back into our sketch, or at least look at it. We're gonna find our 40 millimeter circle. We're gonna hit E. We're gonna extrude one millimeter, hit okay. And we're gonna unhide the case. Right click, move copy on our new object. Go to front view. Drag it up all the way to the top here. So it should be 6.65 millimeters up. Hit enter. Now this will show us how our crystal on the top will apply into the case. We're gonna click modify. We're gonna click the case. And then the body three. And then we're gonna click cut. Make sure keep tools is unchecked. Click okay. We're gonna have the sketches, get a better look at it. We can be rendered if we want. It's looking pretty good so far. The hands of the watch will actually glide along this surface because they're not really that much higher than the movement, only about 0.9 millimeters. So we'll have this whole section for the hands to be visible. The crystal will rest in here, and I don't really like the size of this here. We're gonna click this face, right click, press pull, negative 1.5. That'll leave this right here. The distance between these two will be one millimeter. And our crystal has a one millimeter silver trim, so that'll work perfect. We need to go to the bottom, we need to view the sketch again, find our 35 millimeter circle. You can see that down in the bottom right here. We're gonna right click this, we're gonna hide the movement. We're gonna click this center circle as well. To E, negative one millimeter. Before we hit enter, we're gonna go to operation and change it to new body. We're gonna click okay. We're gonna name this body for bottom crystal. We're gonna hide the sketch. We're gonna hide the bottom crystal. We're gonna click the bottom face of the case. We're gonna right click, press pull, one millimeter. And we're gonna unhide bottom crystal. We're gonna go modify, combine, then operation set to cut. Target body, the case, tool body, the bottom crystal. We're gonna check keep tools, because we wanna have our crystal still there, and click OK. Now, if we hide bottom crystal, we can see that it cut out a section in the bottom of the watch. So we're gonna reshow bottom crystal. We're gonna right click, appearance. When you go out of metal, we're gonna go into glass, smooth, and then glass clear, and then close. That'll give us the reflective qualities of a crystal on a watch. We go to render, we can kind of, we can see a little better. Go back to design. Looking at our watch, these arms are looking a little long, so we're gonna unhide sketches. We're gonna double click main. We're gonna go back here. We're gonna double click this dimension. We're gonna change it to five millimeters. See, that looks a little better. We're gonna finish sketch and everything will be in order. We're gonna hide sketches. That's looking much better. Now we're gonna hide the bodies just like a murder. We're gonna hit C, click the top face, hide the main sketch. Create a circle of 1.5 millimeter diameter. Zoom in. We're gonna create another circle, 0.9 millimeter diameter. From the 0.9 millimeter diameter circle, we're gonna drag out, click, and then we're gonna create a line 15 millimeters long. We're gonna do the same on the other side of that circle. Going straight up, we're just gonna connect a line across the top of them. And we're gonna do something similar for the wider circle. Click a line, then we're gonna go 10.5 millimeters. Do the same on the top, close off that one. Now we're gonna go and we're gonna select all these little faces, finish sketch, hit E. We're gonna make these one millimeter tall. We're gonna name this body five hands. We're also gonna name sketch four hands. We're gonna unhide the bodies like the cops. Click hands, right click, move copy, go to front. And then we're gonna go up 4.34 to enter. For this design, I'm using black hands. So I'm gonna go to appearance, just like we did earlier, drag and drop onto the hands the glossy black, hit close. So this is our watch so far. Hide the bodies again. We're gonna go into the main sketch. We're gonna create a circle of 38 millimeters. This is how we'll create the silver trim for our crystal. Because it's 38 millimeters, there's a difference of one millimeter between these two sides. You have to think in terms of a radius. So we're gonna select this circle, hit E, one millimeter. Make sure operations on a new body. Back into the sketch, select this circle, this circle, and this circle. So the 38 millimeter circle inwards, we're gonna select all of those, hit E, one millimeter, make sure the operation's on new body, click OK. Body's right here, right click, new group, double click this, rename it, top crystal. We're gonna unhide all the bodies just for convenience. Body seven, we'll name trim. We'll put it into the top crystal group. Body eight, we'll name as top crystal and we'll throw it into the top crystal group. We're gonna open the group, shift click both of these objects, right click, move copy, go to front view, go up 6.65, hit enter. We're gonna do appearance again, except this time we're gonna right click on trim, appearance. We're gonna exit out of glass. We're gonna go back into metal, hide gold, go into silver, silver polished, drag it onto the outer rim. Now, 
We're gonna go back into glass, smooth, glass clear, drag it onto our main crystal, click close. Go ahead and hide the sketches. We have a pretty decent looking watch so far. It's starting to look like a watch. So we're gonna go back into design. Now this is the tricky part that's really just kind of a personal preference. There's a couple ways you can do this. One way, the easy way, but the not so cool looking way is you can click all of these edges, right click, press pull, and then you can just drag this arrow you want to do it about no more than there and you can have a watch that looks like looks like that or you can hit, click cancel and do it where it looks a lot cooler so to do it the cool way we're going to hit l we're going to select the left face or the right one either way we're going to hide the bodies hide the main sketch hit l come out 21 millimeters then we're going to hit l again come up 8.65 millimeters take a line come out about like so and then we're going to come out just a reference line here but we're not gonna set it as construction. We're gonna hit D, shift click this line and this line. We're gonna set the angle to 135 degrees. We're gonna make a line here, make sure it's parallel. We're just gonna come out and out. This will just create a cutter object. Drag that out some, finish sketch. Now, we're gonna name this sketch leg day because it's gonna cut down the fat on the legs. We're gonna unhide the sketches. We're gonna select this profile. We're gonna click revolve. We're going to select the y-axis, we're going to unhide the bodies, and it's going to look something like this. We're going to make sure the operation is set to cut, angle 360 degrees, and then click OK. And now we have a cool looking watch. If we go into render, we can see it with a little bit of lighting, and that's looking pretty cool. Now, with the way I design watches, I 3D print the watch, I cast it in resin. There would be some holes in here and here on each side on, the, on an actual watch that would hold the spring bars that hold the wrist strap on. And there'd also be a hole in the side here for the stem to go into that winds the watch and sets the time, unless it's an automatic. In this case, this movement isn't automatic, so you wouldn't have something to wind it. It has a rotor on the back. There would be a hole for the stem, but because I cast it, it's much easier to cast it as one solid piece and just take a drill and drill in the holes after everything's been cast and cured. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. If you did wanna go ahead and do holes, then you could just simply hit C and then select this face here. And then you could just do, say that, and then E, pull it through, and boom, you have a hole. And then you just repeat that for each side. So there you have it, we have a watch done. If we wanted to 3D print it, we'd go up to here, the utilities tab, click make, select the case, and then uncheck send to 3D print utility. We'd click OK, and it would save our file as an STL wherever, and then we'd load it into our slicer software. Also in render, if you want a more realistic background, you go to scene settings, and then you set background, environment, go to environment library, double click field, and give it a minute to load, and now you have some outdoor lighting. You could also do crossroads, it has some pretty sunset lighting. They're really best for lighting, but more than they are for an actual background, but eh, they work, at least for a watch. 